Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. This is JT O'Sullivan. Today, we got a good one. The Rodgers McCarthy saga continues. What I would did was went back to the week two, watch this overtime game, Vikings Green Bay, and it really does a nice job of encapsulating all the issues that I think probably happen within this relationship. And so I know Mike pretty well. He taught me offense in the NFL my first three years in the league in New Orleans, and then was in camp with Aaron and Green Bay my, during his rookie year with the whole Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers not going to mentor him situation. So I got a little understanding of both sides of this, but I think that these few plays, and really we're going to go back and watch the entire series for this Green Bay team in overtime, really encapsulates some of the issues that was probably were probably going on in Green Bay. And he's not saying fudge there. So right here, third and four to basically win the game. And it comes down to a protection air but really there's blame on both sides like many you know bad relationships sometimes probably so we're going to break down the all 22 see exactly what happened pass pro wise here but really it's the quarterback and the play caller it's a unison it's a relationship it's all of those things but you gotta you when you go out there under center you want to feel like you have answers you feel like you can answer all the what if questions and so it's going to be a nice job showing exactly what aaron does really well and where maybe he struggles and the system struggles and Mike struggles. So I think it's going to be as fair and objective as I possibly can be, but I'm excited to dive into the nuance, dive into the details. Let's get into it. Welcome to the QB School. All right, so overtime series here. Now they had a chance to win it at the end of regulation, just couldn't get the kicking game going this time of year. Right here, first offensive play for them. They come out, run what essentially is a nine-stop so it's just going to be a one-on-one -on -one route, a little fake go, almost like a back shoulder, but it's not a back shoulder. It's just a nine stop. They're going to run a vertical release. You come up, rip it on timing, probably not the most accurate ball. He comes back later in the series and throws a more accurate ball. But I love the read. It's really clean, really simple, great series starter. So right here, he's just going to come up and run essentially a vertical stem, nine yards, turn around, you put it right on him. Easy read. Middle field closed. You see this guy coming down, coming back to the middle, probably. Really simple. Easy read. Great job getting a completion, letting your best player make the plays with the ball. And even though it's not the best throw in the world, it's still, we're going to ride Aaron here. He's our best player. We've been doing it for a decade as a franchise. Come out, give, it, give him the rock. So go from really what should be second and one to second and four here. We we'll see the footwork of it, and this is and this is a good example of what what Aaron brings sometimes in the in the kind of analysis by paralysis idea of playing quarterback. And so you see it right here. He's basically pointing to the back, saying, "Hey, you got to check the nickel to the far side." So we're gonna go back all the way to the wide here first. And he's saying that nickel up here, up top on the top of the screen, they don't have accounted for in the scheme in the pass pro. So if he were to come. The back would then have to come across, scan, and get him. He'd have to check his duel, which is right here, to probably this guy coming down right here. So if either if any of these three guys were to come, this back would need to block him. They'd be hot. So Aaron's on top of it. He sees it. He knows exactly who's who in the zoo here as far as where we're at at the line of scrimmage, and that's a great indicator for a quarterback. But you can see it doesn't really help the back. He's not coming because the based on the rotation – now, if Aaron would have seen the linebackers buzz over, as soon as 55 moves over, you know that safety's coming down. Now, it happens late because they get coached too, but you see him buzz over. That back doesn't need to go over there. He needs to get out. But again, it doesn't matter. Gets a completion. Not as accurate as he wants, probably because he's worrying about the pass pro. So they come back second down, second and four-ish. Run uh, open side, inside zone here. Nice job. Probably got more. There's probably more left out there. Missed the block at left guard. Nice play chasing it down by the end. But nice play call. Okay, little little zone play to our right. The offense is left. Little bubble right there. Left guard. Not the best block in the world. But again, nice call. We got a first down. Moving. Coming off. We're across the 50-yard line. One more first down, and it's probably a wrap. So what do we do again? Let's roll into, let's pass pro it up. Seven man protection. A little Fox two is what they call this. Throw in another stop route. This actually might be a little deeper. Let's see how deep he gets. This is a little deeper. This might be a hinge. Doesn't matter. Same, similar concept. Even if the depth isn't identical. But timing wise, this is what Aaron, this is why Aaron's special right here. These type of throws. One, two, three, far hash, rip on his face, a laser. 
defender has no chance. Just beautiful timing, beautiful accuracy. He's going to let that thing go. He still hasn't even come out of his break yet. Right on his face, timing of it. I love it. Ball's halfway in the air before he even comes out of it. Really nice job. This is it. That's Aaron at his best. So now second and one, exactly where you want him. Okay, Fox too. I like this kind of protection. McCarthy loves this protection. Seven-man protection. So what it does for, for all my protection nerds out there, the line, these two guys, the line here is going, these five are going to this will usually. So the backs, sorry, this will. So the backs usually going either inside. There should be another nickel out here. So they're going one, two, they each have one. And what that ends up doing is putting kind of blinders on this right guard. So when he goes to set versus three technique, come back, theoretically, you should get this guy on this side, this guy on this side, and this tailback on this side to give him little walls, basically a triple team you can do against great three techniques. I'm not saying he's a great three technique, just saying that's the technique. Nice job. McCarthy's lived in this protection for a long time. Different ways to get to it. Doesn't work out right here. They all go through the same gap, which defeats the purpose of the protection. But again, it's not Aaron's fault. It's not Mike's fault that they can't get through the right gaps. It doesn't matter. He does a nice job making the connection, making the completion, and that's Aaron at his best. And now it's second and one. Now we're going to come back to the outside zone. This time run it to the tight end side, three by one side. They're running outside zone. You see the linebackers boss over. Here comes the safety. Now Aaron is going to just pull this. This isn't a read play. They're not leaving the end. You see the ends and getting blocked by the right tackle. This is just Aaron trying to play hero ball. And McCarthy lets you do this in the run game, especially on third and short sometimes. But you pull it, you got to make the first. So he's going to come out there and say he can make that safety miss in space. It's second and one. If you get a first down right here, it's probably a game over. So just so we're all on, I'll run it back from the tight, actually, probably be better. You can tell it's not a read play because of what the X is doing down here at the wide receiver. He's just taking the play off. If this is a read play. He needs to be engaging him, blocking him, running him off a lot more than just running back the other way. This isn't any RPO. This isn't quarterback zone read. This is just Aaron pulling the ball and fumbling it on the on the tailback's thigh. So again, they're running zone. We're running zone this way. So everybody should be stepping this way. The quarterback is not reading. This guy is getting blocked. He's coming down. He's engaged, blocked up. Okay? We're blocking all these guys. They're all flowing over. Here comes the safety down. And Aaron basically says, I'm a better athlete than this guy, and I can make him miss in space. So he's trying to pull this ball, come out, and make a move and get what he can get. So doesn't happen right here. Now, who's, this, isn't not, this isn't McCarthy's fault here. This is Aaron trying to play hero ball, and it's just not working. It's worked in the past. He definitely has hero capacity in him. So he'll be able to come out, pull that, make a play. Doesn't work here. Now it's third and four. You go from second and one, and he knows it right there. You go from second and one to third and four. Third and four at the top of the field goal range, you know you're going to get heated up. You know it's coming. He doesn't see it. They're in five-man pass protection. So on that first down, they were in seven-man pass protection, we remember. This is a five-man pass protection. Now they're only bringing five, but they get him with a little with a with some pressure from the from the back end. Now we'll say we'll go back, and it's easy to block it up when you get the clicker. But there are little indicators. Anytime you get a defensive end standing up, okay. Anytime you get this overload look, you know you, someone's coming. They're not all going to be down in the feet of the defensive lineman if they're not coming. Okay, and then scheme-wise, well, that's what I really want to pay attention to from the wide. Where would you go if you knew you were hot? Now, I'm not even saying, I don't even think Aaron realizes that he's hot here because it looks like he's looking the wrong way, in my opinion. But scheme-wise, this is what I, some of the things I didn't love. There's not a lot of great answers here. You essentially have an old-school hook flat out here. Hook flat. And then up here, you have essentially a corner, a shallow and then I'm going to say it's an option route, but it might just be just a straight up hitch. So not a lot of great options. So I'm going to say that the ball should have come up and gone to the hitch, or if you can buy time as a quarterback, if you know where the pressure is, you can come back and throw it to the 
to the drive or shallow. So Favre used to do that all the time on a similar concept. But again, not a lot of great options. Five-man pass pro in this setup. So let's look at it from the tight to see exactly. You can see at the very top of his drop, we'll say, say he takes one in a shuffle, one, two, be able to come up and throw that hitch route is essentially what I'm saying is the only thing worthwhile right here. So he's going to come up, put that thing right on him right there. Otherwise, you can let this guy come across because you know this defender's trying to wall. So if you can buy time coming this way, you can throw that ball right here. But that's a big ask. You got guys chasing down your throat. So not a lot of great options scheme-wise. That's why I see the frustration quarterback-wise. There's not a lot of great answers. But he's not helping himself playing hero ball on third and one or second and one and then coming out here and not looking the right way. So pass pro-wise, five guys blocking. They're going to 54. And you can tell they're going to 54. Aaron thinks he's hot to the right. He's looking to the right, but he's hot to the left because he doesn't see the DB come in. Now, we need a big duel by the left tackle. So what I mean by that is you're going to take, once you get into the feet of the defensive end, let's just go, I'm going to go through the scheme, the whole scheme first. So five guys blocking, okay? Four defensive linemen. Can't see him right here, right here. We want those four guys blocked all the time, big on big. The offensive line is going to 54. You can tell because of how the center and guard react. They come, they're come, they coming straight here. Okay, so then we need a big duel by the left tackle, Bakari. So when he goes to set, he's setting for the defensive end. You can tell he's setting for the defensive end because he's used to blocking the defensive end all the time. But when you have someone in the feet of the defensive lineman and he comes, you got to take the most inside guy. So he needs to set on the inside guy and let the outside guy run the loop, run the bubble. Another indicator that's fun to pay attention to in the quarterback school is you see a defensive lineman who's not used to standing up. Standing up, there's a good indicator that he's dropping out in zone. You're getting pressure from the other side. That's just a good overall. you got to be able to see it. And usually you don't see it at quarterback. What you get is a communication from the outside guy saying, Got a guy standing up, standing up, and then it'll come across. You get an alert to be able to bring everyone else this way. So not a lot of answers here. That, that, that's one thing I'm, I can empathize with Aaron about. You don't know, you don't have a whole lot of answers in this protection in the McCarthy system. But you do have to know what side you're hot on. So he doesn't even know. You can tell. Look at his eyes. He's looking to the right, looking to the right, looking to the right. Whoa, shocked that someone's coming in there. Now he's, it shouldn't be 20, it should be 97. Okay, he needs a short set from the left tackle. And you can tell he knows he made a mistake as soon as he pops out so hard, kicks out, realizes, oh no, I should, I got the, I got the big duel. But again, he's getting hammered. He's not looking in the right direction. He doesn't have answers. Don't love the play call. Obviously easy with a clicker to say that. But again, you see the blame on both sides, I think. I think this, the, this series of plays in a overtime in a very winnable game at home early in the season does a nice job encapsulating all the issues that probably went into this relationship. So hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Please get engaged with the content. If you want more long-form stuff like this, get over to the Patreon community. I'm having fun doing stuff over there. Let me know what you think about the content. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.